On this episode of Fun With Cars, we're going to make a rat rod fuel tank out of a couple of empty R134A cylinders. There's a lot of things uh, guys try to use these for. Uh, I had a fuel tank in this that was rotted like Swiss cheese, I'll show you that. And uh, I needed a cheap tank to hold some fuel. So we're going to make a fuel tank out of two of these cylinders welded together. That's what the tank looked like inside. I had to cut it up. It's so thin and, and Swiss cheesy that I could not use this. It, I mean, it can't really hold fuel safely. Those sections just kind of blew out. All that gunk. So, we use the top of it, and then we're going to mount our R134A tank, well, two tanks welded together, and that's going to be our uh, fuel system. We'll see how, it's going to be a little reduced capacity, but not by much. Top, cut off. Uh, that's the inside of it. i got to clean it out, obviously. And I know it's jagged cut. That's all right. I think when I put these two together, you'll see how I plan on going. Uh, I gotta make this a long cylinder. Put a fuel neck on this side so that I can put it in the stock gas tank location. Maybe even put the bung for a sending unit at the top. That's my plan. We'll see. Number two, the top's cut off. I left a little bit of the rounded part on this one to fit in this one when I weld it and that way that way I can weld it all the way around I'm going to take a uh, little bit of specialty work to get that gap closed but get that lined up as best we can straighten them out, weld it, cut this other end off and we'll make it longer hopefully it'll hold about I don't know, 8 gallons or so. We'll see. Alright, so that's kind of how it's lined up. Sorry for the poor lighting. Uh, you can see how it lines up. I'll be able to weld that gap once I clean the paint off it. And uh, probably tack it in place, cut that other end off, get the length I need, and then weld it all together. Okay, we welded the spout on. We welded a fuel draw line on. And don't look too hard. It might get pretty ugly. See inside there how the spout comes in and the fuel straw comes down there with a little bit of a gap so that when it's low on fuel it'll still suck some fuel in the line and after welding it I epoxied it all up just to catch any little pinholes because this is really thin metal and this is really really thin metal so that's where we're at. Now we're going to add the other section of this. I'm not running a fuel gauge right now. I can always take this back out and maybe drill a hole or I don't know, we'll do something. But we're going to, we're going to weld the other section on and go from there. Here's the new fuel tank welded and epoxy sealed. And We'll fit two straps to the top of the old fuel tank, hook the fuel fill neck on, and the fuel feed line. Hopefully that's good enough for a fuel system for our uh, old Volvo. So this is what's left of the fuel tank. The fuel tank, the sides and the bottom are, you know, Swiss cheese. Lots of holes, all that rust was going into the carburetors. I found that when I was going through the carburetors for a second time because all that stuff got past the fuel filter into the carburetor bowls. So I cut the bottom out of the fuel tank. This is what I'm going to use for my rat rod fuel cell uh, mount. I'll weld it and strap it to this. This fits in the trunk of this car and that's what it's going to be our fuel system. All right we got the fuel tank set up in place. We got the fuel nozzle going to the uh, rubber hose. We got the, this is the fuel line to the car. We're going to run a brand new fuel line up there. But the, uh, the other side of this, the fuel straw comes 
right off of there and it's got to go right here to that fuel line. We'll make that connection. We're going to tack this into place and then we'll take it all out and then we will uh, weld it and strap it on the ground. Okay, using quarter inch round for the fuel tank straps, I got to kind of bend these like so, making big U's out of them. Then I'll weld these up onto that pan. Those are the three fuel tank straps that we're going to use. And I'm going to drill some holes in the top of the old fuel tank, pull them through, weld them, bend them. You'll see. Drill the hole for the first one. And I can bring this in through. That'll be the start of it. Now I just got to drill a hole. It'll be just inside of that hole there. So, be right here. Also, by tighten the drill bit there. All right. The two end straps, you know, pulled through. Basically, it goes around the fuel tank, and then I bent them at a 90 degree to go over everything just in case the top of this tank it's not very strong that got weak and it broke at least the uh, wire will hold the tank in place so this is how I did that first I got the I got it stuck through the two holes I drilled and then taking my pry bar picking up on putting tension on the strap once I have tension on it I weld it so, tension, weld it, I weld it all the way around, and once it's, the rod is still hot, I bend it over. I'm going to cut that down, uh, and then use sealer to seal it all, and you'll see. Here is the final tank with the straps. I did, uh, I did seal them to the tank just so they don't move around. A little added support uh, so they don't rattle. So this is my fuel tank. Obviously, it's a little reduced capacity, but this is just a driver, and if I ever wanted to change it back to regular fuel tank, this just screws in, like six screws and uh, one hose clamp, pretty much, and it's out. So, this is my solution and use for uh, recycling R134A containers. All right, so here's the finished fuel tank in place, uh, somewhat painted and sealed. I'm going to do a better job, vacuum this out and, you know, seal it all up and probably put the trunk on quick. We're going to test drive this thing. Almost a year since we dug this out of a field, Let's see how it does. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.